Hello beautiful and welcome back to my channel and welcome to another one of these four looks with four indie palettes. So I have four indie palettes here to talk about. I have made one look with each palette and I'm going to show you some swatches as well. This is just a way for me to round up a bunch of indie releases when they come in at a barrage, when there's just a bunch of things launching at the same time, so that we can just talk about several releases in one video. I will have all the things timestamped down below in case you want to jump in between and see like something again or if you want to jump ahead or if you just want to come back maybe and get the inspiration for a look everything is going to be time stamped but let's jump into these palettes because there are some really really fun ones <laughs> So for these four palettes that I have here with me today, which is the one that I'm wearing right now, which is the Warlock palette by Fantasy Cosmetica, the Haunted palette by Gourmand Girls, and the recently influenced by Bella Beauté Bar, and the Harvest Moon by Ensley Rain, all of these palettes have been sent to me as PR. Sometimes I have things to be sent to me in PR, sometimes I have things that I bought myself, sometimes there's a little mix, but with these four palettes, all of these have been sent to me in PR, but I'm not obligated to post about them. I just film this video because I want to do looks with different palettes and also don't see this video as like a shop with me, all the things you need to buy. This channel is in QVC. You can just use these as four tutorials for color inspiration for fall. That's all it could be, to be honest. I will put all the info in the description box about these releases. I think all of them are, maybe the Ensley Rain is releasing tomorrow. And if I have any discount codes or anything like that, I will pop them up with the swatches and I'll also put that down in the description box in case you were interested in any of these. What I wanted to mention just quickly before we get into this is that all four of these palettes are a little bit more on the not expensive side, but they're not affordable palettes. The Ensley Rain is, I think, 88. The recently, the Influence is 69. I think this one, the Haunted, is 55. And it's not, how many shades are in here? Six, seven, it's 14 shades. 14 shades for 55. And then the Warlock palette, I think, is just under $40. And this one has nine shades. So none of them are like a affordable options and that's why I think it's extra important for me to like just go through and tell you how I feel about them and so you can see some swatches in different lightings and just get kind of a feel for it. I know that with these palettes what's costing is the special shades and right now we're we're like barraged with different special shades in every single palette and it just pushes the price up a bit so keep that in mind when you're looking at the price tag it's because of the special shades and personally i would maybe prefer less special shades and just to push the price down just a little bit if possible but yeah let's get into the different looks don't forget to check the details in the description box and let's jump in It is with the Haunted palette <laughs> by uh, Gourmand Girls and in collaboration with Doodles by the Bunny. I just quickly want to show you the comparison to the Nightshade palette that they kind of recently did. I hope you can hear me. That one is on the bottom. And the fact that I have to point out that it's the one at the bottom, I think speaks to the fact that they're not the same, but fairly similar. And... I never want to like criticize a brand for like choices that they clearly did that they like, but I'm putting up some swatches next to each other here so you can see that they're not dupes, but they're the same color story. They're, they're a moody purple palette with pops of greens and yellows. And I like the color story of both of them, but I also can't help but think that they might be too similar and for that reason i'm sure they will go together very well but also i personally think that there might be a little bit too similar also because these came out pretty close to each other like only with a couple of i want to say weeks in between maybe a month and a half or something like that but we are going to be doing something with this one today actually i'm like contemplating do i want to do something just green are you allowed to do that? You know what? I'm gonna do a green one. Uh, this one that's called... 
Ooh, that's hard fun to read. Horrify. It's called Horrify. I'm gonna do a green look. Usually I try to mix it up a bit, but listen, the greens are so cute. I just really want to play with them. Amuse me. So let's put that out here. That's, that's a really nice color. A little swampy green. I'm just gonna put this in the outer part of my crease like this. And there is a like a lighter green shade that is called Cursed. Ow, let's poke myself. This one, this one. I think we're gonna use that one in the inner part of the crease and to blend this out a little bit. So this is the Cursed shade and I mean, it is a little lighter, but they're not that similar on the eyes, but yeah, it, it is lighter. It will be a good uh, blending out shade. Uh, I'm using a, a Singed E4. It's one of the shades that I really love buffing out edges with a lighter shade because I feel like it really just helps with that. So I'm just buffing out the edge with that lighter green. I like these shades together. I think it's really pretty. So there are two very different green here. One that is more cool tone and one that is more warm tone. I don't want to mix them because I don't know if I will like the look of the, that on this very warm crease. So I think I'm gonna do the warm tone one and then I'm gonna deepen it up with the black. What am I doing in my inner corner? Maybe I'll do the green, you know what? I'll do the green all the way to my inner corner. I don't usually do that, but let's go for it. I did notice when I swatched a couple of these shades that they were a little bit... Um, they felt a little hard pressed, but I didn't have any problems picking them up with the brush at all. I didn't have any problems with the swatches either. It's just something I noticed with the consistency when I was um, swatching. I mean, that looks stunning. And I like the, the warm with the warm. I'm starting with covering bigger parts of my lid. And I'm gonna wrap my inner corners as well. I'm having just a little bit of fallout here, but that's not that big of a deal. I'm taking a little bit on the lower lash line, just a little bit, and in my inner corner. I think that this looks really, really pretty. So let's do just a little bit of the black. I'm putting on ever so little on a small E5 by Singe. And I'm just gonna deepen up a little bit out here. Not too much. I say as I pack on the black. But I'm putting on some black and I'm going back with the brush that I had the green and I'm adding the green back on, on top, just to like deepen this up, but not lose the green. This is a really good tip. If you wanna deepen something up, but you don't want it to like lose the color, just go over again with the color that you had underneath and just tint the black a little bit so that it pulls in the direction that you want it. I think, that's pretty good. I did put like a vanilla um, in my waterline as well. There is a little bit of mini patchiness here, but honestly, that could be user error. That is my look with the Haunted palette. And you know what? It might be a little boring to go with the monochromatic green, but I really do like how this look is looking. What? Why do I keep getting myself into these lingual situations but i love this i really do i love the look the palette i think the quality is really nice i think that these palettes are also a little bit on the expensive side i'm gonna have to talk a little bit about that in the intro and you probably already heard it and you're like you're late but i do like the quality and i like how these look but i do think that they are a little bit similar these two palettes and i think that do you need both i don't know maybe if this is your favorite kind of color story like i don't know do you need any makeup i don't know what to tell you but i like the quality i like the look and so far i'm really enjoying it am i making sense i don't know let's get into look number two
Okay, so you just saw the swatches of the recently the influenced and I will say I don't Love the packaging or the theming. It's not like I'm against it, but it's like it's not the I like more artsy artsy fartsy packaging um, and I this like just shiny black inside I don't know personally I want something more but again this is a, a bit of an expensive palette and I mean at least we can be happy that the money went to the shadows maybe and not the packaging I just wish that I could have both are you allowed to say that? Do love the Bella Beauté formula though, so I'm super excited. And I'm gonna do something that I actually don't do a lot, and I don't know if you've noticed this or not, but I usually don't do one color on the top and one on the bottom. But we are gonna be playing with these warm colors today. I'm gonna use both these two, and then deepen it up with this one, I think. Um, and one of these shades. One is a multi-chrome, and one is just a shimmer, and honestly, I talked to my friends about this. I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but I feel like I'm burnt out on multi-chromes. I'm back to just enjoying like metallic shimmers and duochromes. Are you allowed to say that? I feel like multi-chromes are the fun funnest to swatch, but I don't necessarily love wearing them. Are you allowed to say that? I don't know. And I'm gonna use, I wanna use this one and this one on the lower lash line, the two greens. I've told you my entire story, let's dive in. I'm starting with Paid Partnership, which is the dark orange, and I'm gonna put that, that's really pigmented and beautiful, I'm gonna put that in the outer part of the crease, and then I'm gonna put the lighter orange in the inner part. That's cute, and I'm not putting it down here because I am gonna be deepening it up, and there's no need for me to be like saturating the primer with the color that's not the darkest one but I am going to be making this a dramatic look so I'm building it up to go a little outwards here maybe we'll do a wing again I've been into wings lately I don't know what happened I feel like Angie 2016 is like hi <laughs> how about a wing maybe so this is the lighter color feud hmm that's really nice it's like a almost like a cinch color i don't know yeah the color just keeps getting this one to look a lot brighter than it is in real life but i guess that's what happens when you do a really shiny lacquered handle that's cute i was almost gonna say and i'm gonna do the same on the lower lash line but that's not true because i'm not <laughs> this is turning into quite a dramatic look which is fun which is fun. So I'm going to do the one that's called Energy Vampire. It's like that I was going to show you, but it's like, can you see the color? It's like a dark plummy purple. Mm. And we are going to see if we can deepen up the crease and the outer corner with this one. I wanted to do a green look first, but I mean, also I just did a green look, but also there's no lighter green look like lighter green matte so you'd either have to use the dark on its own which is fine or mix it with this yellow here which is also fine so that's why i decided to use it on my lower lash line as well because then i don't need to like blend it as much but this looks very cute together very fall leaf appropriate i'm gonna go in with the green monetize but look at this that's really pretty I like that, it's really pretty. So I'm gonna do the dark green. And I think that that's gonna be like, it's the same kind of depth as the purple, if you don't put it where it's not supposed to be. <sighs> like the foolish woman I am. But I'm gonna put that on my entire lower lash line. And I think I'm gonna put some of the shimmers on top. Maybe, no, I only think I'm gonna use the lighter one. So we have this one. You can see this one is a, is a multi-chrome and this one is not. This is more duochrome with like a gold to a red. So I think I'm gonna use that one, the Fake Famous. Oh, I love the name of that, Fake Famous, because yeah, that's literally, that's literally influencers, Fake Famous. They're only famous like within the people that watch them, which usually are like not nearly enough people to be like famous. That is such a good name, actually. So I'm going to put that on the lid. Oh, I love a good fire. I mean, I love red eyeshadow. 
if nothing else, you saw that in the palettes that I created with Uden's Eye. There's so many red eyeshadows in there because I just feel like red eyeshadow goes with everything. And it's so pretty. That's really nice. Okay, we'll do this on the entirety of the lid, I was going to say. That's not even true. I'm already lying. Sorry. Now I'm one of those influencers that lie. But I'm going to put it on the inner half of the lid. And I'm going to gently blend it into the mattes. And then I'm going to go back to the brush that I had an Energy Vampire on. And I'm just going to blend over to make it a little seamless. But, oh, and I'm losing my top. Getting undressed. So that is the look. I think that's really cute. I wonder, am I going to do the green in the inner corner. I'll actually grab a small pencil brush and we'll do the backlash, which is the green. It's, oh, it's a little flaky. It's a little flaky, so I'm going to spray this, but it's swatched really beautifully. And we'll do that here. Oh, that is pretty. But I definitely think you might need to spray this. And we'll meet up almost to the inner corner but not wrap around in a corner. And like half of the under eyes and just dragging down a little bit. That's cute. And then there is this one that's called Viral. And I think this is like a gold to a pink uh, iridescent duochrome. Yeah, I think that's what that is. And let's put that on the top part. Is that a fiber or a cat hair? Hmm. Not something I want to have on my eyes. And I'm putting that just here. You see, it just creates this little gradient here. That's not too visible, but it just creates something. Oh, it's very flaky. We'll be fine. Just something a little extra here. I hope. Or is it just mixing together? I don't know. Did that do anything? I'm not 100% sure if that did anything. What do you think? Was that unnecessary? Or did it do anything? Oh, it's there anyways. I feel like it... This is why I like a matte in a corner instead. Because I feel like it just accentuates the little fold that I have here. I don't know that I love that in my inner corner. It's a cool shade, but I don't know if it like worked for my inner corner. I say that as someone that, again, has some folds, but I like the look. I think it's really cool. I just probably should have put a matte pastel and I keep losing my top. <laughs> Oops. So everything is in place and this is what it looks like. And I really, really do like the look. I, like I said, I don't always do a different lower lash line than I do an upper lash line, but I really like how this came together. And I wanted to use a couple of more shades in the palette because I just felt like it, it really went together. And I do feel a little bit like a fall leaf. So yeah, overall, I think that these are nice Bella Beauté um, shadows. I just am not in love with the theming of, or the packaging but I think the shadows are really nice and also there are quite a few like special shades in here which does explain the higher price tag but I also I don't know like I said I think I'm burnt out on multichromes am I alone <laughs> but I like the look I like the quality nothing to complain about there let's get into the third one Ensley Rain and this is gonna be a first impression for me. I've already swatched the shadows because you saw the swatches and as you can see I have swatched my palette and I can say that the shimmers are very they're like almost a mix between Adept Cosmetics and Fantasy Cosmetica. If you under, if you have ever tried those they're very 
Some of them are a little bit almost creamy, they're very emollient, they're very shiny and sparkly. I will say personally, I prefer a palette that doesn't have this many shimmers. Also putting this many shimmers in the palette when they're almost all of them special shades makes the palette very expensive and inaccessible for a lot of people. But with that being said, I mean, it's beautiful. It is truly beautiful. And this tombstone here, you probably saw the swatch. It is beautiful. So we really need to be doing something with that one. And I'm thinking maybe, and that's not a multi-chrome. And again, I think I'm burnt out on multi-chromes. There are some really beautiful shades, this one and this one that have uh, holographic sparkles in them, which is also incredibly beautiful. So I'm thinking maybe we'll do something with these two, Tombstone and Sparkling Cider. And maybe then this one and this one. So we have decided. I'm starting with Pumpkin Patch, the orangey matte. And I have not, oh, that is very pigmented. Use these on my eyes. And I just used a little now because I don't want to like totally set the primer with this one because I'm going to go in with the other one as well. And I'm wondering, I'm, I got to make sure that this is like, there's nothing light in this palette. I'm realizing now. I'm realizing now there is nothing light in this palette whatsoever. What am I going to do as an inner corner? Hmm. I'll just smoke it up, I guess. I mean, I usually don't do like smoky all the way in, but if this is the lightest matte in the palette, I guess that's what we're doing. I don't mind coming out of my comfort zone to try something else. And that's really beautiful and very pigmented. I'm going to use a little bit of that uh, under my eyes as well. So this is the purpley spooky season and I am just going to be using not too much but I'm just going to be using that's also very pigmented in my crease just to deepen this up. That's yeah that's very pigmented but I'm going to deepen it up even more. Let's do something super smoky since this is a very moody and like dark and like grungy sultry smoky palette i feel like there are no other options than dark looks which there's nothing wrong with that but since that is what the palette's offering we are gonna fully dive in and i'll do that down here as well these shadows are extremely pigmented so i will say if you are fair to medium i'm a light medium i would say try to start with something that's a little lighter than these because they are very pigmented and it's easy for it to become even more than you thought because this is e this is beautiful but it is more than i thought i'm gonna be using phantom here so i'm just saying that next time i use this palette i'm gonna be using it in conjunction with a palette that has something that is a little bit lighter because when you start blending out the edges it's just so pigmented that it just keeps spreading and it just becomes a lot. And if you're the kind of person that tries to avoid that, I'm just letting you know that maybe starting with something lighter might benefit you. I think we might try and do one of those a little bit more easier halo eyes, which is like when you start out with a crease just like this, or less dramatic, but just a normal crease and then you let the shimmer shadows be the halo. So this is the shade Sparkling Cider and I think it is a like green to pink, maybe some gold in there with a black base and then some holographic particles. And I am gonna be spraying this, spritz, spritz. And we are gonna be, stop. We're gonna be putting that out here And we're going to be putting it in here. Again, since there are no inner corner highlights, we're embracing the lack of inner corner highlights. That is very, very, very stunning and very cool. I'm going to use that small brush that I use for the um, dark shade. And I am going to be 
spreading that out. Normally I don't do shimmers in my outer corner, but I'm making an exception for this. Look at how beautiful that is. It would have been super pretty all over the lid too. But all over the lid, we're doing Tombstone, which is a very sparkly metallic. I think this is more like a duochrome. This isn't, as, at least as I swatched it, I didn't see it as a multi-chrome. Wow, that is super pretty. Just tapping on the edge here. You can try this technique with a smoky crease and then a dark shimmer and a lighter shimmer. Yeah, I think it's a duochrome. That is very impactful. I think I'm gonna do some black in my waterline. I'm gonna put on some lashes, but I mean, the quality of the shadows are beautiful. I personally think the palette maybe leans a little dark and I would have preferred more mattes and less shimmers, but these are personal preferences. The quality is beautiful. So this is the finished look and I feel super dramatic and super dark and it's, I feel like it's very Halloween appropriate, but maybe darker than I would do I mean, I love dark and dramatic makeup, but I feel like this is dark and dramatic that I would do if like someone asked me for lunch or something. And mm, I have hair on my lip. Don't you just hate when that happens? Let's just mush it in there. But I really do like the look and I like the quality of the shadows. I think I'm just surprised at how extremely pigmented the mattes are to the point where it's like, I the person who loves dark, deep, dramatic eyeshadows, I'm like, I'm gonna need to reach for a, like, a light shadow. But, with that being said, this look, pretty dope. It is time for the Fantasy Cosmetica thing and we are gonna be, uh, I think I showed you some swatches of these lip glosses as well. They're not lip glosses, they're lip oils and they're in Fiend, Demon and Efreet. You can see the names here. So I am gonna be wearing one of them. I'm kind of intrigued by the black. Of course I'm gonna be wearing all of these but I kind of want to wear the this one obviously. Let me see if I can actually see the prices um, of this one. There is also, with all of this, there is launching, they're always launching some perfumes. I feel like this one, yeah, this one is the Warlock one, and this one is just her launching with the Bard. The Bard smells very sweet, like it's a very sweet florally perfume, but the Warlock one, the Warlock one smells extremely, in like, I like this a lot, and my husband liked it too. It is pink peppercorn, basil, mint leaf, plum, grapefruit. There is like cilantro, eucalyptus. There's also some grass and vanilla. This is just a very fresh and minty, but still a little herbally perfume. I really like it. Let me actually double check what the one, because I have the, uh, the one here. The barred one is orange, almond, honeysuckle, pink peppercorn, toasted marshmallow, and jasmine. Yeah, sweet florally. I feel like that pretty much sums it up. So the lip oils are $12.49 each, and Fantasy Cosmetica is one of those brands that I do have a code with. I just wanted, because this collection is like more than just the palette. Oh, this smells like Valtus. Mmm, like toffee. This is definitely a little bit more of a sheer liquidy oil, but I think that's pretty, is that fluff? <laughs> but I think that's probably pretty good since these are more um, bold colors, but I cannot wait to wear the other ones as well. But this one in Efrit, Efrit? I played Warlock in uh, World of Warcraft, unfortunately not in Dungeons and Dragons, but feels very nice and oily. So what I want to do, 
what I want to do is that I want to play with this one. You see, it's a it's a red, almost like a magenta red going to this green. Really want to play with that one. I think we're going to play with this and this in the crease. And then this and probably this. And then, yeah. Let's start with these two in the crease. So this is the pack shade, which is that like yellowy green. I'm going to put that out here because this is going to be my blending shade out here and I'm going to do the other green in the inner part of uh, the crease. Maybe this is me thinking maybe I'll actually do it on my lower lash line now that I think of it. So we'll do this one here because I did do a look that was like a red going to green with my palette with Uden's Eye. And those looks are also... If you want more inspiration, check out those videos. Again, you don't need to be purchasing any palettes to get some inspiration of like how to combine some colors. But I was just thinking that maybe I should just try something a little bit different and not do something too similar to that. This color blends very easily. It's not 100% opaque, but I also feel like it's so smooth and nice that... Honestly, I don't even feel like it needs to be. I mean, that looks really, really nice. So actually, let me see if I can find a brush that's like not too dirty. And let's do the profane and let's do that on the lower lash line. This might be one of those shades that would benefit more from being um, on a sticky primer because it is probably a little white base to be able to be this bright but i think we can make this work and then i'm gonna do the reddish matte that is called power in the crease and i'm just gonna put this a little bit lower down and honestly i'm just hoping that this is gonna work i'm just hoping that there's enough yellow in this one so that it doesn't turn super muddy Again, it's not, it doesn't need to be super opaque. I just need a gradient. Ooh, I'm actually gonna switch brush to an EO2 instead, just to be able to do this in like a little smaller strokes. And I'm going in with some more of that packed shade. And I'm trying to blend the edges in between these a bit. I think that the color story, and this is me sometimes with palettes, and it's just like how you are used to using stuff. Sometimes I look at color stories and I'm like, oh, that is so like aesthetically pleasing. But I don't see a blending out shade for both this one and this one in this palette. So you either have to use them on their own um, or bring in something else. But it's only a nine pan, so that's not the end of the world. But I just wanted to see if it was like possible with this yellowy one. But I would say that it's possible with a lot of finessing. With a lot of finessing, you can make it work. It's turning a little muddy on the edge, but I would say I'm just barely avoiding it. So this is the shade Patron and we're gonna like listen it looks a little crazy right now but we'll make it work. <laughs> I hope. We'll hopefully make it work but we're gonna put this one on the entirety of the lid and like I said before there is a little muddiness going on but sometimes I just need to like I need to try this so that you know do these work together? Can you do mattes like in this way? Because I feel myself when I buy a palette, I want to have a million different ways of using them. I don't want it to just be like, oh, these are the only two ways that you can use these things. I want there to be like so many options. And I feel like the yellowy green and the red, they work somewhat together, but maybe not perfectly. But overall, I do think they look pretty good. So I just needed to have that red in the crease so that it would look believable now that I put the duochrome on top. But I do think that that looks really cool. I'm actually going to be doing the... I wanted to try this one that is the blue, but now I'm like, should I just do the, the black, the occult? 
but I kind of want to try the blue. Let me try the blue, Eldritch. We need to see. We need to see how these work together. Because these mats, they look so pretty together in the palette, but like they also need to work. I will say I'm getting a little bit of patchiness here. I think you can see these mats do not want to layer on top of each other. That's a shame. That is a shame. I do think that it looks pretty good and I was able to like somewhat maneuver this one. I am gonna be using, there is this Arcanum. I think I'm gonna be using that on top of this green uh, on two thirds of my lower lash line. And then I'm gonna be doing a little bit of the, the dark blue and the outer part just to hopefully <clears throat> tie this together a little bit. Because I realized that this is a little crazy, a little busy, but it's okay. Oh, that, that is not okay. Oh, oh. I need a more detailed brush on this. Ah. Okay, let's do a little bit of the dark blue as well and just hopefully tie this together. I will say this dark blue, not my favorite dark blue I've ever worked with. It's, you can see it's lifting, it's a little dry. I, I love this brand, but I still have to like point out when I just don't think that this is a good quality blue, I'm sorry. Um, again, I've only used this palette once, so this is not my final verdict of it. I think the shimmers are beautiful, but I don't know if I 100% like agree that the mattes are like the perfect ones. I'm gonna put a little bit of the matte green just to tie it in here. I think that this one looks incredible in theory, but there are some things you have to work around when using it. Shimmers are beautiful though. I mean, that red, pink, green duochrome, or maybe even multichrome, absolutely breathtaking. Love it. Love, love that one. So wet looking and so pretty and not chunky at all. Big fan. Let me finish this look up and we can just have a chat about like all of these palettes. This is the finished look and I really do like how it's looking now that I have everything done. But I will say out of all of the looks that I created today, this was probably the one that took the most effort uh, because the mattes were a little finicky and also because I don't necessarily think that the undertones of these mattes match together so that they like blend effortlessly into each other. This is just a personal, it's a personal preference. So, and is this a black or dark green? It might be a dark green. So maybe these two would work together. I also didn't think that they necessarily layered that great on each other either. And I feel like Fantasy Cosmetica has had better mattes in the last two palettes that they released. I'm just, this is just me from this first impression comparing them to what I know from the brand from before. Still think it's a beautiful palette, but I think it's beautifully, more beautiful here, beautifully. I think it's more beautiful here in theory than like when I started trying to blend some of these together. And this comes from someone who likes to wear more than one mat at a time on your eyes. If you're the kind of person that just likes to put a mat in the crease, a shimmer on the lid, mascara and be out the door, then you have definitely def different kinds of combos here that look really beautiful together. This is just coming from someone that likes to wear more than one mat at a time. And I definitely, next time I wear this one, that was my dog Kaisa. Next time I wear this one, I will definitely be uh, starting with the darker one first and blending out the edges. That's one way you can work with eyeshadows that don't layer perfectly. I just am used to not having to do that with this palette. So of course, if you start with the darkest and blend the edges with the lighter one, you, there will be a totally different result, of course. But again, we're still coming back to that. Are the, the, the same like undertones? I'm being nitpicky. I understand that I'm being nitpicky, but there are so many palette releases that are coming out right now on the market. Mainstream, indie, we're just getting so much. So I just want to mention all the different details that I'm seeing so that you can make an informed decision on 
which one is right for you or if none of them are right for you. Because again, like I mentioned in the beginning, all of these palettes that I uh, did looks with in this video are, none of them are like affordable palettes. So we need to make sure that we're making informed decisions. All the information is going to be down in the description box. Let me know which one is your favorite. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you again in another video, uh, probably tomorrow. Yeah. New makeup releases tomorrow. It's Friday. Woo!